Hi, I'm Todd from Mainline Dino. We're going to continue on setting up the Pro Hub onto a test vehicle here. We're going to start by connecting the left and right units to the vehicle. We're going to bolt a hub adapter onto the car. We're going to unravel our uh, harnesses from the dynos and run them to eventually where the cabinet's going to go. We're going to put our yellow torque arms into the dyno and then we're going to actually uh, film bolting the dyno up to the hub adapter on the car. I've jacked the car up, I've taken the wheel off and, and I've bolted uh, a hub adapter onto the vehicle for testing. In this case here, so this is a sample of our uh, hub adapter. It's a specific bolt pattern for this particular Holden Commodore. I've bolted it on using the wheel, the, the car's actual wheel nuts and tension them to the, the factory specs. Our hub adapters have, you'll notice six holes here. There's three tapped holes and three drilled holes for a dowels. So what connects the car to the actual hub here, we've got three dowels in the drive flange on the dyno and we've got three drilled holes here that we use our three cap screws. We're gonna put through these flanges here and connect into the dyno when it's engaged. You don't have to be millimeter precise to the height of the car. You basically normally sight it to the same height. The dyno actually pivots on its center of gravity and we can actually move the dyno up and down 40 to 50 millimeters when we're actually engaging it onto the car. So we've pushed the dyno up to the hub adapter. The, the dowels help locate them just when you push them together. Now we're gonna fit our three clamping bolts. They just thread into the, into the adapter. Now the tension for these bolts is just 60 foot pounds. So we just wind them in. You can generally run them up with a, a ratchet, but then if you want to, you can actually then tension them to 60 foot pounds. Okay, the next process here, we're gonna fit the torque arms to the dyno, which enables us to use the dyno specifically in high torque applications. We can operate the dyno without these for a low horsepower, probably be three to 400 horsepower. For our testing here, I don't usually fit them at 400 to 450, but we do recommend you do fit them. Uh, so it's just an arm that just slides into the dyno here. We can adjust the, how far it moves in and out so it's not in your road for getting around the car. And we wind the, the foot down to contact the, the ground. We're oper operating the dyno in this direction here today. So we're fitting the arms on the front of the dyno. If we were to say test a, a front wheel drive car and we've driven the dyno in the opposite direction, we're operating the dyno in the other direction, we would fit the arms to the back of the dyno. We've bolted this side up. So now we'll move around the other side and check that. Now the dyno is designed to take the weight of the whole car. So, so this side's also bolted up. So now we're gonna let the jack down and let the dyno take the weight of the whole car. As the dyno is shipped, we have the, uh, the power cable and the data cable rolled up in a neat uh, bundle. So now we've got to unroll these and we'll feed it around the back of the dyno towards the cabinet. Now this dyno being a right-hand drive dyno, it means that the left dyno unit has the long harness attached to it. So this harness here is 12 metres long. So it's got plenty of room to go around the back of the dyno to get to the cabinet because we have a lot of latitude on our system to be able to move the cabinet around so we don't have, in case we happen to have a, a side exhaust entry, we can move the cabinet way out of the road of the exhaust. That's why there's so much cable. So this one here, they're just shipped with reusable cable ties. We can just clip them out and then we can just neatly unroll the, ca the cables around the back of the car. Okay, well, another point we need to make, we've bolted the dyno to the car. You see here, we're, we're approximately perpendicular to the car, 90 degrees. Now, it's not critical because the, the dyno has a spherical bearing in the outer face here, which can allow up to 10 degrees of misalignment. So in the case of this car, we could have the dyno a couple of degrees either way, it's not gonna matter, but also it becomes very handy when you've got a drift car that has a lot of camber in it, the dyno can actually accept up to 10 degrees of camber or misalignment with the vehicle. So once again, it becomes, it makes it quick and easy. You don't have to be precise about where you position the dyno in connecting it to the car. Okay, we've got the dyno bolted to the car now. So the next process we're going to be getting our cabinet into the room and connecting the cables from the dyno to the dyno cabinet. And then we can start getting ready to actually perform our first test on the car. Yeah. 